forever overhead. Happy birthday. Your 13th is important. Maybe your first really public day. Your 13th is the chance for people to recognize that important things are happening to you. Things have been happening to you for the past half year. You have seven hairs in your left armpit now, 12 in your right. Hard, dangerous spirals of brittle black hair. Crunchy animal hair. There are now more of the hard curled hairs around your privates than you can count without losing track. Other things. Your voice is rich and scratchy and moves between octaves without any warning. Your face has begun to get shiny when you don't wash it. And two weeks of a deep and frightening ache this past spring left you with something dropped down from inside. Your sack is now full and vulnerable, a commodity to be protected. Hefted and strapped in tight supporters that stripe your buttocks red. You have grown into a new fragility. And dreams. For months there have been dreams like nothing before. Moist and busy and distant, full of yielding curves, frantic pistons, warmth and a great falling. And you have awakened through fluttering lids to a rush and a gush and a toe-curling, scalp-snapping jolt of feeling from an inside deeper than you knew you had. Spasms of a deep, sweet hurt. The street lights through your window blinds cracking into sharp stars against the bedroom ceiling, and on you a dense white jam that lisps between trembling legs, trickles and sticks, cools on you, hardens and clears until there is nothing but gnarled knots of pale, solid animal hair in the morning shower, and in the wet tangle a clean, sweet smell you can't believe comes from anything you made inside you. The smell is, more than anything, like the swimming pool, a bleached sweet salt, a flower with chemical petals. The pool has a strong, clear blue smell, though you know the smell is never as strong when you are actually in the blue water as you are now, all swum out, resting back along the shallow end, the hip-high water lapping at where it's all changed. Around the deck of this old public pool on the western edge of Tucson is a cyclone fence the color of pewter, decorated with a bright tangle of locked bicycles. Beyond this, a hot black parking lot full of white lines and glittering cars. A dull field of dry grass and hard weeds, old dandelions' downy heads exploding and snowing up in a rising wind. And past all this, reddened by a round, slow September sun, are mountains, jagged, their tops sharp angles darkening into definition against a deep red tired light. Against the retreating red their sharp connected tops form a spiked line, an EKG of the dying day. The clouds are taking on color by the rim of the sky. The water is spangles off soft blue, five o'clock warm, and the pool's smell, like the other smell, connects with a chemical haze inside you an interior dimness that bends light to its own ends, softens the difference between what leaves off and what begins. Your party is tonight. This afternoon, on your birthday, you have asked to come to the pool. You wanted to come alone, but a birthday is a family day. Your family wants to be with you. This is nice, and you can't talk about why you wanted to come alone, and really, truly, maybe you didn't want to come alone, so they are here sunning. Both your parents' sun. Their deck chairs have been marking time all afternoon, rotating, tracking the sun's curve across a desert sky heated to an eggy film. Your sister plays Marco Polo near you in the shallows with a group of loud, thin girls from her grade. She is being blind now, her Marco's being poloed. She is shut-eyed and twirling to different cries, spinning at the hub of a wheel of shrill girls in bathing caps. Her cap has raised rubber flowers. There are limp old pink petals that shake as she lunges at blind sound. There at the other end of the pool is the diving tank and the highboard's tower. Back on the deck behind is the snack bar, and on either side, bolted above the cement entrances to dark wet showers and lockers, are gray metal bullhorn speakers that send out the pool's radio music, the jangle flat and tinny thin. Your family likes you. You are bright and quiet, respectful to elders, though you are not without spine. You are largely good. 
You look out for your little sister. You are her ally. You were six when she was zero, and you had the mumps when they brought her home in a very soft yellow blanket. You kissed her hello on her feet out of concern that she not catch your mumps. Your parents say that this augured well, that it set the tone. They now feel they were right. In all things they are proud of you, satisfied, and they have retreated to the warm distance from which pride and satisfaction travel. You all get along well. Happy birthday. It is a big day, big as the roof of the whole southwest sky. You have thought it over. There is the high board. They will want to leave soon. Climb out and do the thing. Shake off the blue clean. Your half-bleached, loose and soft, tenderized, pads of fingers wrinkled. The mist of the pool's too clean smell is in your eyes. It breaks light into gentle color. Knock your head with the heel of your hand. One side has a flabby echo. Cock your head to the side and hop. Sudden heat in your ear, delicious, and brain-warmed water turns cold on the nautilus of your ears outside. You can hear harder, tinnier music, closer shouts, much movement in much water. The pool is crowded for this late. Here are thin children, hairy animal men, disproportionate boys, all necks and legs and knobby joints, shallow-chested, vaguely bird-like, like you. Here are old people moving tentatively through shallows on stick legs, feeling at the water with their hands, out of every element at once. And girl women, women, curved like instruments or fruit, skin burnished brown bright, suit tops held by delicate knots of fragile colored string against the pull of soft mysterious weights, suit bottoms riding low over the gentle juts of hips totally unlike your own, immoderate swells and swivels that melt in light into a surrounding space that cups and accommodates the soft curves as things precious. You almost understand. <laughs>